right, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Sean van den Berg. I'm an investment specialist here at PSG Wealth. Um, and you can see there by our topic today, swing trading strategy. Um, so just to kick off, I can ask you a question. Do you know that there's only four, well, there's four common uh, trading styles, namely scalping, day trading, swing trading, and position trading. And obviously today's uh, webinar is focusing on that swing trading strategy. So um, the, the whole idea today is to discuss ways to benefit from uh, trading CFDs, number one, uh, trading, uh, trading in CFDs, contracts for difference, using the swing trading strategy. So that's my goal today. So this is the um, my agenda. I can just get there quickly. Okay. So I'm going to kick off with uh, discussing what we call the, the three M's, method, methodology, and uh, the methodology, the mindset, and the money management. And then touch on uh, swing trading, and then uh, go to three um, very simple uh, swing trading strategies, and then wrap it up like it. Okay. So um, the whole idea is that, and I've asked this in the past uh, uh, webinars. Um, now, do you want to be a consistently profitable trader? I think that is your goal as as a trader to be consistently profitable. Then the the first step, if, if, especially if you're a novice is to choose a trading style that best suits you. And what I mean by that is that, you know, that's easier said than done, uh, especially for, for, for newbies. So, um, but it's also, uh, can put it this way, it's, it's important that you set yourself up for long-term success by having a trading strategy that, the trading strategy that you are comfortable with. But also more important is that, uh, uh, it, it, it depends on, on obviously how long you like to hold a share, number one, and number two, how much risk you're willing to take on. So I always say to people, you know, if you want to be a trader, you must accept there are risks, and obviously with risk, risks that comes with losses, it's managing those, those risks and managing those losses, and that is the whole uh, emphasis of this webinar today. Okay, so um, just to kick off, the three M's, some of you might have heard of this before, I have touched on it many years ago. Um, it's a book I read. So yeah, it's not my idea. I didn't come up with this idea. This is a, a, comes from a book called uh, uh, Coming to My Trading Room, which was written by a guy called Dr. Alexander Elder. Some of you might have heard of him. Um, he's one of the best trading authors um, of our time. In the past few decades, um, his books have sold millions of copies. You know, the, the other one was, um, um, ah, come blank now. Coming to my trading room. Um, ah, complex. Anyway, just Google Alexander Elder. You'll find there's quite a few books out there. Okay, but all three, um, call it all three M's are equally important. Call it there as a starting point. But you can think of them as three pillars um, of your trading and, and the backbone of your trading plan. Uh, we spoke about, we touched on trading plans last month's webinar. So without them, your trading foundation will not hold and you will not succeed. So imagine, uh, I always think of a, of a three-legged bar stool. Uh, you break one of those legs off, um, break, they remove one of these uh, three M's, uh, one of these M's, and obviously what's gonna happen, the bar stool falls over. So the idea is to combine all three together. Your chances of success is it's much better. So um, as we say, the, the uh, three M's are in trading are methodology, mindset, and money management. Um, they each play a crucial role in your trading success. But as a trader, you need to master all three, um, put it that way. Um, so we're going to each one of these individually now, but uh, what's important as a, at the outset, you know, is finding the right balance. And that's obviously difficult to measure these ratios. You'll see that in the next few slides, I have put more emphasis on money management or risk management. I say boy, maybe 60% of your time should be focused on, on money and risk management, and maybe 30% uh, of your time on mindset or, or trading psychology, and only 10% on, on the methodology. And I know a lot of you do the opposite. You know, you spend most of your time trying to find the holy grail, the methodology, the secret strategy that's gonna make you millions. <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, we could talk about it a bit in more detail some other time. But the whole idea is that you know, if you assume 70% of your skills is in money in money management and maybe 30% in in a method or a mindset, you know, you'll be a good trader or investor. But also, if you had to say you know, 80% of the money management, maybe 10% in 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 the mind and method, you know, you'll miss a lot of opportunities. So you know, the idea is to find a balance that's gonna 
uh, uh, suit you. I, as I say, I personally believe that money and risk management is the most uh, most important uh, uh, leg of the bar stool. Because um, the thing is, I look at it this way: it ensures your survival and consistently uh, consistency in the, in the markets. So you've, you you've been, you you um, you're able to play the game for longer put it that way. Okay. So um, remember, you know, Warren Buffett's got his rule. Rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. So it's the same thing when it comes to trading. Your number one rule is capital preservation, and hence the, uh, the focus on that. But he has a little quote, and you'll see it on the next slide, and from Paul Tudor Jones, also one of the top traders in the world. Don't focus on making money. Focus on protecting what you have. Okay, so there we go. There's a quote right up top there. So when it comes to uh, money management, um, you know, as I say, I believe 60% of your, of your focus should be on, on risk and money management. Um, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of things, you know, the most, you know, this, I believe is the most important uh, aspect to trading. You know, you can have all the, the money, the uh, uh, um, um, skills regarding to, you know, with, with a mindset and methodology, but if you're losing consecutive, you know, you're losing uh, 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 trades all the time, over a period of time, you know, you're, you're going to be out of pocket very, very soon and you're going to back up with trading um, because ah, the market's manipulated. That's a common excuse I always get. Um, so the whole idea is that um, remember, money management is all about maximizing your, your profits and minimizing your risk. Okay. So um, there's some rules here. You can put it that way. In a nutshell, what is money management? You always have to think about risk before reward. So think about uh, you know, protecting what you've got more than about making the profits. If you do that, I believe that, you know, just gives you that, the way I look at it, it gives you that peace of mind that uh, I know what my losses are if I make any losses and I can manage those losses. Number two is that, uh, you know, you know what your, your pit trade risk amount is. You know, um, you know, we'll talk about position sizing a bit later. But that it's a random amount that you know mentally and financially that you're able to that you can safely lose. And I can tell you now, trading is is more more often than not about losing, but it's making those losses small. Okay, you don't ever take big losses. Okay, so that's that's what it's all about. So um, again, this, the third point there, where to place your stop losses properly, we'll, we'll touch on that, and obviously position sizing, we'll touch on that too. But also. You need to understand, you know, the, the, we'll talk about the four components or the three components, especially when putting on the trade, is uh, yes, I know where to get in, which is the easiest part, um, but also you need to know where you're going to get out, where you're going to take your profit, uh, what is your target price, you need to know those numbers. Um, and then putting those, those three numbers together and help you calculate what we call a risk reward ratio, okay, and you should never trade with a trade less than one to two. You're gonna risk one rand to make two rand. You never wanna go below that ratio. You might sometimes you're gonna risk one rand to make three rand. You might risk one rand to make three, or four rand or five rand or six rand. As long as that ratio doesn't go below one to two. Okay, then you'd rather walk away. It's not worth it. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So quickly on the next step, mindset. We have discussed this in last month's uh, webinar, uh, trading psychology. Um, as I say, I believe is the second most important aspect to trading. Um, but it's the hardest to master. You know, we're, we're very emotional. Um, as I mentioned last month, we talked about uh, uh, greed and fear, and there was also regret, and uh, uh, and there's other fear also. But um, fear and greed are the two biggest uh, enemies in the market. So the idea is there is to understand how you make decisions under stress. Okay, and that's why the trading plan is so important. Plan the trade and trade the plan. It's an old cliche, but it's very, very true. Okay, it helps you um, uh, eliminate, avoid those emotions. Okay. So it's all about it, as I mentioned just now, understanding and accepting risk. There is risk involved in trading. Uh, you want to be in a situation, if the market goes against you, you must be able to get, get out very, very quickly. Okay. Um, so it's all about creating rules, psychological rules. And we touched on it, as I said, last month. It's all about... Put it this way, uh, I, I say they self-control, but to me it's discipline. If you can have discipline to stick to a trading plan, you will make money. Okay, so um, it's very, it's very easy to lose money. You know, a lot of us think, ah, we're a cowboy, and um, 
uh, are going to make big money. And it's like playing roulette. Put all my money on red or put all my money on black and hope. Hope is not a strategy. You've heard me say that before, said in past webinars. And then 10% of, uh, of your focus should be on methodology. This is the least important one. You know, it's the easiest to this. The technical analysis helps you to do that. Um, but it's, it's what we call trade setups is finding those trade setups, and that comes with time and experience. So it's it's how you make your buying and selling decisions, and we're going into more detail with that just now. Um, but it's mainly about when you're going to buy, when you're going to sell, when would you hold, and things like that. Having those rules, and again, it comes back to that that uh, uh, the importance of that trading plan. So there's tools that we'll use. You know, we use technical analysis. Some of you might be using fundamentals or combination of the two. Um, I like to combine the two together. Um, I like to find companies that are profitable, that are uh, uh, paying out dividends, that are um, uh, quality companies. Uh, avoid companies that are risky in the sense that they uh, uh, they're avoiding making losses and things like that. Those are the shares that's on the way down. Um, it's usually the small cap stocks. So yes, in, con in today's context, we're talking about trading CFDs. Uh, we're only trading, the, we're only focusing on the top 100 companies. Okay, so yeah, you'll find good quality companies in those blue chip shares, those large cap companies. I'll go into more detail a bit later. So the idea is that um, you're going to find a methodology. We'll, we'll touch on three different strategies just now, but the idea is to go back in in time. This is where we talk about back testing. Can look at your charts. Can look for those examples. How do those with hindsight? How did that strategy work for you? Okay, would it have worked out? Where would it not worked out? And things like that. And that's what I mean by back testing. We don't we don't offer a simulator or anything like that. You have to trade in the real markets of real money. Um, sorry, to grab some water here. The idea is that you know the simulator gives you that false uh, idea that you are confident with real money. Those voices start talking to you. So yeah. Well, the main idea is that you want to be following your methodology. So if it's a, a, a trade setup uh, that's worked on break, a breakout strategy, stick to the steps. We'll be discussing that, um, and also uh, sticking to your trading plan. But don't. I always find people that go out and rush out and try and find a, a, a trade where there's nothing on. Um, and that's uh, you know the, the methodology we talk about today is what we call high probability trading. And you find that these trade setups don't happen so often. So you have to be a bit more patient. And uh, when that does come along, um, that's where you want to make money. So uh, you, this avoid, it helps you avoid over trading, put it that way. Okay. So um, let's talk about swing trading. So what is swing trading? Basically, um, you'll see in the next slide, I go into the, the four different styles very, very briefly. Swing trading, as the name suggests, is a game of swinging from buying low or, and then selling high. Very simple. You've heard of that cliche before. How do you make money in the market? Buy something at five rand, sell at 10 rand, or at a higher price, you make you make, you make money. So the idea of swing trading, you hold your position, holding a trade from a few days to a few weeks to a few months, but more, but more longer term. Than, uh, than day trading or scalping, uh, but also shorter than position trading. We'll go into that in the next slide. But um, as I said just now, most, most swing traders obviously rely on technical analysis charts. And on our platform, our trading platform, we have that viewpoint. Um, it has that charting facility. It's got very basic charts on it. You've got 40 indicators to choose from. But very the basics are fine. You know, moving averages and trend lines and things like that. You'll see that's what we use today. So um, yeah, you see the four different styles of, of trading. Um, if you look at here, if I bring my my uh, point in here quickly, there we go. There's your scalping, day trading, and this is what we're focusing on today: um, swing trading and position trading. So very very briefly, um, swing trading, uh, scalping, very very short term, from a few seconds to a few minutes. Be very active. So if you haven't got the time and you've got very low or you're a bit more conservative to moderate, this is not for you. This is where you're going for very small um, um, price interday price movements. Um, you know, it's very stressful for a lot of for a lot of people. Number one and number two is also very huge, is, is very, very time consuming. So I always say this is for the, the cowboys, the guys that got the big money. These guys are trading the index futures. Um, by the way, the index future, the, the, we're trading the Aussie 40 and things like that. The, 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 the June contract, for example, as I say, the big money, you need to put an initial margin down 
of 58,000 rands. So it gives you exposure about nearly 600,000. But again, that's not for everybody. Not everybody has that kind of money. Um, so scalping is for, as I say, the cowboys. Then we've got day trading. Um, this is for someone who doesn't want to hold position overnight. So you you close you close the position when the market closes. It's also a very um, uh, time consuming uh, from a, from an activity point of view. If you're watching the charts, so again, very similar to scalping, you're relying on very small uh, gains uh, to build your profits. So a lot of people use day trading; they trade currency futures. Um, it's another way of, another way of of making money. You can trade currency futures. And as I said today, we focus on on swing trading. We'll go into more detail. But this is where you're going to focus more on. Uh, you can use over equities. Ideally, you want to leverage uh, derivatives like single stock futures, CFDs. Um, you can also trade your index futures here if you want to, but more longer term, as well as your currency futures. So it's a bit more from a, a, a longer time period. And then position trading, uh, I call this active investing, um, instead of buying and holding. And this is more buying and selling, but more longer term. So uh, uh, CFD is, uh, is, is great for that in the sense that there is no um, expiry compared to single stocks and there's obviously no rollover costs. Okay, so I hope that gives you a bit of a quick overview. You can see at the bottom there, very, very basics. What, what it's all about is uh, define your your goals. And obviously all of us will say, oh, we want to make money. Uh, but more specifically, how are you going to make money? I want to be a consistently profitable trader. That's how, uh, the way I look at it. My risk, pro my risk, uh, risk uh, tolerance. And you can look at yourself as either being uh, aggressive or a, a speculator. I like to see myself as a, a, a high probability trader. So I'm looking for for high risk, but uh, sorry, high returns, but at low risk. Um, so it's managing that that the risk is more important for me. That's what we call high probability trading. Being your odds in my favor. Okay, using um, technicals is mostly the time of trading. And again, we said just now at point four there. Determine my when am I going to get in? When am I going to get out? I take profits. Where's my stop loss in case things go wrong? And then also always, I believe it's very important that we back test our strategy. Um, also with hindsight, you know, every time you close out a trade, I have a, a, a trading journal. Um, it's like an Excel spreadsheet where I have all my trades. I work out my my position sizing and things like that. But also importantly, is to write down the reason for buying and selling. You know, why did I buy and why did I sell? Uh, and I write down, so it's just with hindsight, I can look at the, uh, uh, the trade go well, did I stick to my trading plan? Okay, so I hope that makes, makes a bit more sense to you guys. Um, let's move on to the, uh, so let me just go back to my normal pen. Let's move to the next one. So let's talk about swing trading. As I said just now, it's all about buying and holding shares for a short period of time, from a few days to a few weeks or, or months. So the idea is buy low, sell high. Um, so yeah, there's a bit more involved than uh, um, than just buying and holding as an investor. You have to be informed about the market trends. You know, what are the big things moving in the markets now? Um, so obviously everybody's waiting to see what's happened with, with uh, inflation in the States. Once we have our, our Reserve Bank governor uh, giving um, uh, the verdict on interest rates at three o'clock this afternoon. Well, those kind of things you have to be aware of. So be aware of those kind of news what's moving the market everybody's worried about inflation everybody's worried about interest rates when they're going to cut interest rates etc so um, you also need to have very again i gotta stress this a lot very strong risk management skills and there's two things we look at uh, is stop loss and, and position position sizing okay and then as i mentioned last month having a trading plan and um, and managing that mindset. Those are very very simple. What is what is swing trading? So um, how do you switch on the swing trading? Uh, uh, how do you how do you do a swing trade? So just understand that uh, we're using we're identifying trends. Either the market's moving up or the market's going down or the market's moving sideways. So as that sideways market, what we call a trendless market, or a, tra a, 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 a trading market. Uh, it's either trending up or it's a trading market sideways because it was very called consolidation. A third of the time, the market's moving sideways. And to tell you now from my strategy, I, I like breakout trading. I look for sideways markets because uh, that helps me 
I look for, for periods of consolidation. That's what we're looking at. So in this context today, you know, choose the market to trade. I mentioned all those different uh, trading um, products, but we're focusing on, on, on CFDs today. So yes, you can focus on, on trading equities, uh, but we want to focus on, on the top 100 shares. So make sure universe is a bit smaller and ideally make it a bit, uh, even smaller than that. Uh, you're focusing on the top 40 stocks, those large caps, so your margin is about 15%. And then out of that top 40, you know, you're going to choose some shares that are uh, either bullish or bearish based on a 200 day moving average that helps you with the trend. And then also from there, looking at overbought, oversold, it helps you also, are we at the bottom of the cycle, or the top of the cycle? Then we can look at things like uh, uh, drain tools, support and resistance. So the idea is to create a watch list of potential winners. That's how I look at it. So you're gonna have out of those 40 stocks, um, you're gonna have one or two banking stocks, you're gonna have insurance companies, you're gonna have uh, mining or resource companies, um, and some industrial. So ideally out of those 40 shares, bring it down to about 10 to 15 shares. And then you go focus on those companies the whole time. Get a, you get a, a developer, I call it a feeling, you understand where support and resistance levels are, you know, get a feeling when these markets go break out, you, get, you know when the dividends are being paid, et cetera, where the market going ex div, uh, et cetera. Okay, so that's the idea. And now obviously from that, uh, we can use various, uh, um, uh, call it chart patterns also to help us get in and out the market. Uh, sideways markets, we use, uh, 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 rectangles or flat flat uh, top triangles, uh, reversal patterns like head and shoulders and uh, uh, rising wedges. Uh, the last few days I saw that, uh, that um, Richmond gave a nice rising wedge formation. It was a nice way to, to uh, make money on the short side. But the idea is out of these 10 or 15 shares, you're gonna have between three and five positions open. Okay, so that's very, very broadly, uh, what is a swing trade? So let's talk about um, the three uh, simple trading strategies. Um, there's four things you need to know. Number one, as I mentioned, just touch on very quickly. What is the direction of the market? Is the market trending up? Is the market trending down? And the easiest way to do that is you use the 200 day moving average. If the price is trading above the 200 day moving average, the trend is bullish. In other words, the, the, the demand pushing the prices up, we're making higher highs, higher lows, long term uh, primary trend is up. If the shares trading below a 200 day moving average, we're making lower highs, lower lows, that's a bear market. You should be more on the short side. So as above the moving, a 200 day moving average, you should be more on the long side. In other words, buying a CFD. Okay, that's a very simple way of looking at it. And then obviously we need to also know when we're gonna enter the trade, when we're gonna get out of the trade, where's my, my stop loss. So that is, that's how we look at it. So um, when it comes to the very, very simple one, and all these trades of all these uh, um, uh, trade setups are very simple. And the reason why I use them simple because that's the way I look at it. So you can either use them as individuals. I like to combine all three together. So you can see I'm going to build up on these three slides. So support and resistance. These are just uh, trend lines. Um, when I say support and resistance lines, these are horizontal lines that helps you establish uh, different levels. So it shows you when prices are set to change direction. So when the price breaks up above a resistance trend line, you'll go long or you'll buy. When it breaks down below the support trend line, um, you'll go short or you'll you, you sell. Okay. So um, it's these these numbers are not exact numbers. Um, yeah. So the more times the, uh, the share price touches the level, the more reliable it is. Um, so the more often reliable, and the longer that trend line is in place the more reliable. Okay, so I, instead of saying uh, levels, I, I might sometimes refer to them as zones. Okay, so um, just understand that a, a resistance, there are more sellers and a support, there's more buyers. And that's what moves the market up and down. Okay, so um, in the next slide, you'll see some examples. Yeah, yeah I hope you, can, you guys can see here. This is Standard Bank. Um, you can see all those uh, horizontal lines. If I bring in my cursor here quickly. Um, so I look for a prominent, a prominent uh, level first. You can see yes, this is quite prominent as it touched before. Yeah, it touched there. Uh, so uh, that would be a support line, but I go right back and say, ah, you have a support, you have a resistance, resistance. There was a bit of a, a what we call a, a false breakout. They broke out, come back, broke up again, and pulled right back again. 
again, so I, I call this a resistance support level, so it interchanges. So previous resistance will be a support level. So that does add some some strength to it. Okay, you can see that's only touched twice. This is what they call a double bottom, point point, and it went up. There you see it's touched quite a few times and it broke through there. You can see that's a very long tri a very long candle that has increased volatility. But you can see there's resistance there, touched once, touched twice there, broke up through there. And you can see basically a bit of a, a, a turning point there. Okay. And then that's also very important. It's, that's one, two, three days there, four, five six seven eight days so that there is a very very important resistance level so stand bank has to go way above that level for this to go above for it to be a bullish again this year this purple line here called purple is what they call a 200 day moving average so at this point in time we're still being bullish uh, but it's broken down these are the 21 day and 40 day moving averages you can see the crossover the address confirmation trend down Okay, on increased volumes. This is volumes at the bottom here. So there's call it panic selling uh, and prices dropped. Okay, so this is how you'd read a chart, just to understand the psychology behind it. <laughs> Drop price movement down, panic selling, etc. So yes, that's number one. Simple. And again, also on a, what I would highlight, this is personally what I do is I like to have resistance lines, I color them blue, and support trend lines red. So the more visual you can make your analysis, the better. Okay, let's talk about the next one. We can bull up on that one called Fibonacci. We've got the next one. Oh, we go. Oops. Fibonacci retracement. These are just horizontal lines, the point where support and resistance levels are most probably going to occur. So the whole idea of this Fibonacci, um, you know, they're based on what they call Fibonacci sequence. Uh, I suggest you go Google. Fibonacci sequence, you'll see how these things uh, play out and the mathematician numbers that are many years ago and these things work. But basically it's just uh, uh, numbers and, and the software do it automatically for you. Um, the way I do it, you, you draw from a prominent low to a prominent high and the software automatically will calculate these percentage movements in between those two points. So those percentage movements or based on certain percentages, you can see that, uh, and that's based on that Fibonacci sequence I was talking about, 23.6, uh, 38.50%, 61%, and 78%. But basically, you'll find the market always pulls back to a certain level before re going on. Okay, you'll see the next slide goes into more detail. Um, and I've also tried to, and I made these charts very, very bright. Uh, yeah, obviously, you can make these uh, uh, not as bright. Uh, but I've made it on purpose. I've drawn from a prominent low to prominent high. This is again Standard Bank, same chart you saw just now. But now you can see that's your 23%. Market pulls back 23%. You can see it. It's basically in the zone that pulls back. There we can see that was a very important support level. It's basically coincides very closely with my um, my Fibonacci level. 50. So that's 38 percent, and that's 50 percent. This is what I get excited about when the market pulls back at least 50 percent of the previous move up. So we round up. We're back in this little green area here with, with, with Standard Bank. Uh, so yeah, it's in this green area. I get excited. I get very excited when it pulls back into this very pale green area. And that's how it'll coincide with this level here. I don't think it'll pull back so far. Because there's other technical indicators like MACD and that's saying we are very overbought already, but we are below 200-day moving average. But you can see how these things kind of coincide with my support and resistance levels from the previous slide. I hope that makes sense. Okay, now let's talk about the breakout trading strategy. So this combines everything together. So this is when prices move above a, a defined support and resistance level on increased volume. So volume always precedes price. You want to see people taking up on selling shares or, or buying shares beforehand. It creates like a snowball effect and you'll pick it up on, on volume. Okay, that's what I if you want to say from an insider trading point of view, always look at volume. You'll see volume moves up. But basically when the share price breaks up above resistance, that's where you'll buy or go long. When it breaks down below um, the support, you'll go short. Okay. And uh, vice versa, yeah, the idea is that uh, volatility will increase on the breakouts. You'll see the, the chart, the, I, I use candlesticks, you'll see that they, they, the, 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 the uh, length widens, and that highlights, for example, the volatility. And we use various uh, chart patterns for these breakouts. I use a lot, I use the sideways market, rectangle, 
Um, I use a lot of triangles, head and shoulders and things like that. The most, I like what they call uh, continuation patterns when the market moves up, goes through cons sideways consolidation area and then breaks out of it and continues on its initial path. So number one, I know the trend and number two, I know where, where the market's going, the direct, the, sorry, the di direction and I've also got a target price. So uh, what you call reversal, pa continuation patterns are very, very powerful. Um, the reversal patterns like uh, head and shoulders, to me it's, <laughs> You know, you have to you have to be really on the ball. Same as the rising the rising wedge to take advantage of very very short term. But anyway, um, there are certain ways of of finding uh, uh, these candidates. Um, so identify the candidate. As I mentioned just now, we're focusing on the top 100 shares. Ideally, make it list a bit smaller. Um, so all you're looking for shares is about to break out, and that's what uh, that's where we mean by a candidate. Only once it breaks out. And that's where you, be, you, you you get into the trade. Wait for the breakout, and that's the biggest challenge of the strategy is being patient. You see that it goes of number nine right at the bottom there. Be patient of the strategy. Re, re, set a reasonable price objective, and you'll see from the charts in the next few slides, I've, I've done it. Just understand that sometimes, or not sometimes, the market does pull back. Uh, what do you call it? It comes back to retest. So allow for that, be aware that does that. Sometimes you might be shaking out on your stop loss. So make sure your stop loss is not too tight. Um, and that goes with point six. Now when your trade or your chart pattern has failed. So that's why you say, if you understand that there are losses involved and you're willing to accept those losses, but as long as those losses are small, that's a game of trading. So a lot of ideas be disciplined to exit your trade at uh, at your target price, ideally you should be closing out your position at market close because sometimes the market goes against you and um, you want to close out too early, especially when the market opens. You know, you're very tempted to close out and sometimes the market bounces back. So be aware of that. So exit at your target, uh, very simply. Um, and I said yes, go click on this little link at the bottom here, Investopedia. It's one of the best websites you can look at from an education point of view. There are lots of information there about uh, trading. Okay, but uh, very simply, going back to our, our uh, Sandbank chart, you can see I've just combined all these together. Um, I've been looking at Sandbank for a long time. We spoke about this in our, uh, our Thursday meetings. I've been mentioning about the support trend line. It originally was from here. I can do it up here, and there was a, a full-on breakout here. Okay, that was my trigger. Um, so you could have gone short there, but there was a breakout there of that support level. But obviously this was in today. Um, so if you missed that there, but you can measure from there to there, and that same distance, that's where the market's going. And that's the point I'm trying to make here. Now, yes, it's a bit more advanced this this signal, and I've been, as I said, I've been watching it very closely. But I want you to get the idea. Sideways market measure that distance on the, on the breakout down. So this was giving me early, what they call an early bearish signal. I knew the market's going to turn. I can see about these by the, the MACD. This this high was lower than that one. So this is what we call bearish divergence. So at the moment it's very overbought. Uh, sorry, oversold. It doesn't give me any buy signals yet. It's even lower than that. But I anticipate it might go down a bit lower, uh, might go down a bit to that level there, but I don't anticipate much lower uh, back to these levels. Yeah, I anticipate my might, might rally from here and go where I popped here again. Remember this very important resistance level. But even buying at the bottom here, to sell up top here, take advantage of the sideways market, you still be making money. Okay, so um, I hope that uh, gives you some idea. Just for, very simply, uh, if you want to bring in contracts for difference, um, there's those four prices that you need to know. So just to simplify it for you, I kept these numbers very really easy. So you decide to buy 10 Rand, my target price is 15 Rand. So going to my little graph at the bottom here, I'm looking for a sideways market. So I wait for a breakout. If it breaks out above that, it must break out and close above that price there. Um, uh, 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 so this is, for example, at 10 Rand. That was five rand. The difference between the two of them would be five rand. So that same distance I add into my, my entry price, my target price uh, will be 15 rand. Very simple. Okay. Um, so that's where I get this from. My stop loss uh, is I like to use, uh, as I mentioned just now, my risk reward ratio is one to two. So if my my risk is is, is um, uh, my reward is five rand, half of that. Okay, half of that will be seven rand, so two rand fifty. So in between the two of them, I'll put my stop loss. 
okay? So my stop loss is at seven rand 50. If you put it right at the bottom here uh, at, at five rand, then I need to make this double target. Okay, so it's very important uh, between support and resistance levels. That's uh, uh, that's range out of the in between here. So I'll look for previous uh, uh, in between here. I'll look for other uh, shorter term support and resistance levels to kind of confirm that. But just to get the idea across, so that's how I've got my re my risk reward ratio of one to two. Okay, so in that scenario, that's my what I call risk management on the on the on the money management side. How much money you got to play to per trade ideally i like to use 100,000 rand for cfd trading because of my two percent rule two percent of of my hundred thousand is two thousand rand that's what i'm willing to risk per trade i never want to lose more than 200 two thousand rand per trade take that divided by my stop loss my 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 uh my risk so that divided by that gives me 800 shares okay so if you look at the next slide oh let me get this out Anyway, to move to the next one. There we go. 800 shares times my entry price at 10 Rand gives me 8,000 Rand exposure. Now, when it comes to CFDs with PSG, we do have a minimum requirement. The exposure, the transaction value must be eight, uh, at least 25,000. So, okay. So you won't be able to put this trade on to say, eh, you won't be able to play straight on. So 25,000 is our minimum transaction value. So if it divided by 10 Rand, you'll have to buy 2,500 shares to, have, um, to be able to trade. So that times our brokerage, which is 0.4%, is 100 bucks plus 15 rand. That time is going to cost you to, to open up a trade. So first of all, the reason why I'm pushing CFDs is number one, they're capital efficient. You don't need a lot of money to trade. And secondly, they're very cheap. They're half priced compared to trading equities. So your initial margin in this scenario, you don't have to put down 25,000. You put down 15% of the top 40 stock. Okay, 3,750 rand. Okay, so to close out the position, I had 2,500 shares, got up to 15 Rand. My exposure now is 37,500. So my profit as such is, is uh, 12,000 Rand. So in and out the market, my total costs would have been 287 Rand 50. So as a percentage, 2.3%. Two, two, two okay, but look at this here. Remember, I didn't put down 25,000, I put down 3,750 Rand. That is a percentage of my profit. Whoops is I'm making 333%, uh, not too shabby, eh? Okay, so that's what it's all about. So I hope that gives you a bit of idea from swing trading. I hope I've whetted your appetite. Please go do some more homework, go Google, go find information out there. There's a lot of information. Okay, so um, let's look at, uh, just quickly summarizing it. Um, oops, going the wrong way. So the three pillars, remember mindset, methodology, and uh, uh, money management, risk management, money management, most important. There's four trading styles. Most of you will be will, will be doing swing trading. Uh, to fit more in with your time, to fit more in with your what I like, call risk. Um, and obviously, from that, you can just there's different ways of of uh, putting on the uh, finding trading setups. I've mentioned three. I can tell you there are hundreds. Okay. Uh, very simple, but I, I hope you got your idea. Got the idea across that. Uh, um, uh, yeah, it's simple. You just have to know those those four things right at the bottom. And those four comp components critical. What is direction? If you get the direction wrong, you'll be on the wrong side of the market. You'll be really losing money. So trade in direction. Uh, trade above that 200-day moving average, or trade below that 200-day moving average, and be on the right side of the market. Where am I going to enter the trade? Where am I going to get out? What's my stop loss? Those are the four numbers you need to know. Okay, well, the four things you need to know. Okay, so cool. Let's see uh, what questions you guys have. I'm going through this very quickly, and I've run out of time again. Yeah. Okay. So uh, here's a question from Jan. Um, can I can I trade shares using the swing trading? Yeah, no worries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jan doesn't like leverage risk for CFDs. Yeah, Jan, it's, you know, it's, as I mentioned just now, it's, it's, CFDs are more uh, capital efficient. You don't need a lot of money to trade, uh, number one. And number two is that uh, it's all about risk management. So it's very simple risk management. If you have a trading plan and you stick to the trading plan and you have that stop loss in place and you have your position uh, sizing in place, uh, it's great. That's all. It's what it's all about. Okay, so I hope that answers your question, Jan. Yeah, you can trade shares, just understand your costs are much higher. Um, 
you lose trade, you lose 25,000 rand, and your cost is about 1% in and out. Maybe there's also a security transfer tax, and there's a lot of other things involved. Hence, I'm saying CFDs or the better way to look at it, especially from a trading point of view. Um, here's one from Tavo. Do, offer any, do we offer, does PhD offer any trading courses? Uh, Tavo, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have any formal trading, uh, 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 training, or trading, uh, training on trading <laughs> classes as such. As I mentioned just now, I suggest just go Google, go Google swing trading, go Google day trading, etc. You'll find a lot of information out there. But look at a lot of different websites, you'll see these guys talk the same language. Be careful, some of these guys on the forex side, uh, a bit more cowboys. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but this, the principles apply. Okay, and then the other side is, yeah, uh, unfortunately you have to do a lot of reading. You know, I've got, I spent I spent a lot of money over the years, especially in books, especially on technical analysis. But there's a lot of information you get out there. Okay, so I hope it answers your question. So if, in conclusion, um, I said you go click on that little link there on CFDs, understand what the product's all about, understand that it, it, it is a leveraged product, there is a risk involved, you understand how it, how it works and uh, you, you're okay managing it, you'll be making money. Okay, so uh, let me see what other questions are here. Uh, Ed, pleasure. Uh, what else is there? Great webinar, I appreciate it. Sean, well, obviously, you, Sean, you got your, your music sorted, your sound sorted out. Okay, awesome. It looks like it's uh, all the questions. Great, guys. So from my side, if you've got any questions, you're welcome to drop me an email at uh, wealth at phd.co.za. Um, or you can contact me on one stream, 0860 368. But from my side, thank you very much for being on this webinar. Um, until next month, bye for now.